Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Pizza Legends. In this video, we're going to organize our previous code into little bits called maps. More on that in a second. We're also going to dynamically render game objects to the screen based on whatever map we're on, and then we're going to start making objects move with a game loop. And real quick, if you've missed any of the previous episodes in the series, they're all linked below, so feel free to check those out before watching this one. Let's get started. So let's start working on a unit called an overworld map. Now currently in overworld.js, we're rendering the exact same scene and the exact same people every single time. Uh, but this little pizza world that we're creating is going to be built up of many different areas, and those areas are called maps, not just this demo room every single time. So if you are in the shop, or you're outside on the street, or you're inside in a pizza restaurant, or you're like at your house or something, you know, those are all going to look different, and they're all going to have different people and game objects inside them. And so that's what we're going to do now. Um, so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and create a new JavaScript file called overworldmap.js. And just as before, we're going to create our JavaScript class here, and we'll name it the same thing as the file. So overworld map, and it's going to have a constructor, as always. We'll give our constructor its configuration objects. So we can pass things into it. This is how we're going to make all the maps feel different from each other. We're going to be passing game objects into the map. So we'll go ahead and capture that here. So this.gameObjects equals uh, game uh, config.gameObjects. So we know our overworld map is going to have a source, just like the, uh, the source that we've been dealing with so far in overworld.js. This is which image we want to use for the map's appearance. But we're going to take these maps just like one step further. And instead of just one source, we're going to have a lower source and an upper source. So now we're dealing with two images, uh, basically a lower layer and an upper layer. The lower layer is going to contain our tiles, kind of like the floor that our characters are standing on. Uh, and then the upper layer is going to contain things that should be drawn above the characters. So imagine like rooftops, or if they were like treetops that should be layered over the top of the character's head, we're going to have this like sandwich going on where it's lower layer is drawn, and then all the characters are drawn, and then the upper layer is drawn. And so we can rework this just a little bit by saying maybe lower image dot source is going to be the source, and then we'll create the lower image itself as a new image. And then we'll do that same pattern for the upper image. And now we have two images that are ready to be drawn to our canvas. So we have two different images here that, again, need to be drawn at two different times. And so we're going to set up two different methods to kind of give us the control to do that. So we'll say draw lower image is going to be a new method on our class here. And that's going to take in the context we want to draw to, just like we've seen before. And then to that context, we're going to draw the image starting with this dot lower image. And for now, we're just going to put it at 0, 0. Now let's repeat the same concept for the upper layer. So draw upper image this time. And now we have what we need uh, is kind of the core building block of a map where we're going to have a bunch of objects in it and then some configuration on what the appearance of the map should be. Let's go ahead and start creating actual maps by making configuration objects. And just for now, we're going to move this later, but uh, just so we can kind of see the comparison, we're going to define some content right here. So we'll say window dot overworld maps, we'll call it. This is going to be an object of all of the different maps in our game. So in here, we'll have things like demo room, uh, maybe kitchen, maybe if we had like a, you know an outdoor street level, all the configurations uh, for the different maps would go right in here. For now, I'm going to get rid of these and just move over some of the code that we have in overworld.js and see how it kind of fits into this object. In demo room here, we'll go ahead and start with our lower source. I can just paste that in. That's the same path that we were using in overworld.js, just doing it over here now. And then again, we'll do the same idea for upper. And the directory that um, is included in the code download for these video series of these videos, uh, you're going to see a lower version of the map and an upper version of the map. And again, they're cut the same way. They just live right on top of each other. Next, we're going to supply our game objects, which is going to be a key value pair, uh, starting with our hero, just like before, new game object. And then we can bring over the same configuration that we used over here in overworld.js. It was just x and y. 
And then maybe we want to do that same thing for an NPC. Let's say NPC one, give us some more room here. It's also a new game object. And again, we'll bring over all the stuff we did before. So at X, Y in the skin, we're just kind of moving where it goes. And now to shake things up, just to kind of demonstrate the point, let's go ahead and copy this map and make a whole new one. We're going to change some things. So this one's going to be called kitchen. And then in our directory here, we're going to have a kitchen lower and kitchen upper map. And we can shake up the hero position a little bit, say like three, one, and then this NPC can probably move somewhere else. How about like nine, two? I, I don't actually know where these are going to end up, so we're going to see. Um, and then, you know, to prove the point, say this is a different map that has two people in it. In fact, different people, we can say this is NPC skin two and maybe three. And then we'll go ahead and change the name because now that's confusing. So how about NPC A and B? I'm just kind of doing these on the fly. I would say that they're at spot 10, 4. And just like that, we have a whole other map in our game. There's a concept that I want to talk about in a little bit, and that kind of involves making an editor for your game, where right now we're just punching in values here, and that's working OK, uh, but that can be kind of slow and tedious. So often, uh, it makes sense to create an actual editor that helps build the content for your game. We'll get into that in future videos, of course. I uh, just wanted to mention that here. But for now, let's go ahead and start seeing if we can wire this up to the overworld. So popping over to the overworld, reminder that this is kind of what we have going on right now. Still just drawing static values in the overworld directly, but we're gonna go ahead and start uh, moving this to be drawn from our content objects. We also have this little band-aid of a set timeout happening. We're gonna get rid of that right now. I mentioned in the previous video that the purpose of the set timeout band-aid was really just to buy us some time uh, so that these images could download before we try to draw them to the screen. Uh, but we're going to replace that with the real solution now. And that real solution is something called a game loop. Now our game loop is going to be a function that fires every single frame. And so roughly that's going to be 60 times a second. It's going to call itself, wait for the next frame, call itself again, call itself, call itself, call itself. And during every function call, it's going to draw the latest state of our game to the canvas. So basically all of our drawing code is going to move to our game loop. So let's go ahead and start that now. I'm going to make a new method here called start game loop. And we're going to call this to kick off the loop. And then from there, it's just going to kind of keep running. So our first step is that we need the actual function that needs to run every single frame. We're going to call that step. And now once it's defined here, we can go ahead and call it the first time. But we need it to keep calling every single frame. And so for that, there's a browser feature called request animation frame, and that takes a callback function. And so the web browser is going to take care of calling this function for us whenever a new frame begins. And so just inside this callback, we can call step again. If I throw a console log in here, stepping, and now in init, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see, let's just do it up here. I'm going to say this dot start game loop. So right when the browser starts up, it's going to start this loop. Let's go over to the browser, pop open the console. When I reload the page, you see that our loop is running. It can be stressful to see this at first, uh, like, oh my gosh, all the stuff that's happening. But don't worry, uh, with game development, that's totally normal. Back to the code for a second. Let's go ahead and get rid of this console log. And just to reiterate, I want to call out a quick bit of nuance that this isn't quite step calling itself. It's step calling step again uh, when a new frame starts. Say that we uh, moved this and had it outside of request animation frame. This would be an infinite loop that would crash our computers because basically step would fire and then it'd fire again, fire again, fire again. There'd be no gap for like other processing to happen between the calls. But by having it in here, code's going to continue to run, but this function will just continue to fire every single frame. Next, let's remove our old stuff that we don't need anymore. Uh, so we're starting the game loop. Before we were going to you know, do the hard-coded images and the game objects and stuff, we're going to get rid of all this because we don't need it anymore. We're going to do it a different way. So now we want to tell the overworld which content map we should be drawing data from. You know, Instead of being hard-coded, it's going to come from these map objects over here. 
So to do that, we're gonna give the overworld something called a map. I'm just gonna start it null on the constructor. Um, but you know, right when we init off, we're gonna define it. So we'll say this dot map is gonna be equal to a new overworld map class. And in the config here, we wanna pass in the data from one of our content objects here. And so we'll say window overworld, uh, let's just start with the demo room again. So we'll be creating a new instance of overworld map, passing in the configuration data from demo room, which again, we could swap this part out to be any map in our game, and that would be the map that the game boots up with. Okay, so we haven't actually included overworld map on the page to see it working yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop open to uh, index.html. And in here, we wanna make sure we include the new file that we've been working on in this video. So that's gonna be overworldmap.js. There is a little bit of a source order dependency going on now. Uh, basically, overworldmap.js uses new game object kind of when the file um, is first loaded onto the page. And so that sort of breaks our rule. We'll clean that up in a little bit. But for now, just make sure that game object is defined first and then overworld map. Eventually, all of this content stuff will move to a different location. Um, but, but for now, we're just kind of rolling it right here so we can see the clear relationship of the class itself and then the configuration for the class. We'll continue to smooth this out as we go. Okay, and with this included on the page, let's go ahead and pop open to the browser. Uh, we're not actually gonna see anything yet, and that is because uh, we're not actually doing any of our drawing code anymore. So we have a map, let's use it. So in our game loop, first thing we're gonna do is draw that floor layer. So we'll say this.map.drawLower image passing in this dot context so it knows what to draw to. We'll give ourselves a comment there. And again, let's do the same thing for the upper layer. In between those two layers, we wanna draw all of our game objects. Now our game objects is stored as an object of game objects in our map, and so we can just say this.map.gameObjects, but we wanna wrap this in an object.values. So we'll take the values of that key value store and iterate through them. So for each object, we're gonna uh, say object, get into the sprite for that object, just like we did before, and say draw passing in the context. And when we run the code, our objects are here just as they were before. And so the cool part about the setup is that now if we wanna launch the game in a different map, we just come down to our init here and say uh, overworld map, overworld maps dot, I don't know, kitchen instead of demo room. And remember in this file over here, we have a few different maps defined or two right now, switching over to this one. And I load that up in the browser and now we have a different environment and the people are all over the place. Let's go ahead and fix that. We'll just take the Y values of the characters here and add a few to it. So doing like four at a time. Take this and run it. There we go. Now it's a little bit more realistic. And now one more quick fun thing before we end this one. If we take our overworld, and now we have all of the drawing happening in a loop. And so what that means is that we can start updating our state earlier in the loop, and then the new state will be drawn to the screen. So let's see, in the area that we're drawing all the sprites and we're iterating through all the game objects, let's just take them and say object.x plus equals um, 0 0.5. So every single frame that runs, we want this character to move to the right. Let's go ahead and run this. I run the game and that you can see that there's these smudging of characters and we'll explain why in a second, but let's go ahead and back out and make that, um, that number smaller. So if we said like 0 0.2 and uh, coming back to the game here and reloading it, we'll see our characters gradually move here. And then as soon as they get off the screen here, um, they start to leave these, these marks. And that's because their position is constantly being drawn over the old drawing of the map. We're never actually clearing it out. And so uh, we were okay when everything was covered by this map because the map was covering up the you know, previous frames drawing of the characters. Uh, but we want to make sure that we clean up our drawing before we move on to the next frame, or we want to clean up at the beginning of a drawing of a frame. So back over to the code, cleaning up the canvas is actually pretty easy to do in, in Canvas. Uh, just the first thing we're going to do when we start the step 
is to clear the rect. And so the, the method there is this dot context that clear rect, and then we're going to give it um, an x, y, and then a width and height that we want to clear. And so in our case, we're just going to do the entire canvas. So we'll start in the top left corner and then uh, clear off the whole width of the canvas and the whole height of the canvas. So every single frame, we should be starting with a fresh slate. And now when I run the game, the characters will move and there won't be any weird blurring effect. Okay, so with this game loop, we have kind of a good setup going on where we have objects on the screen, their state can update every frame, and then the latest state will be drawn to the canvas. That sets us up uh, and puts us in a really good position to do things like player input, where now, um, you know, instead of moving to the right on every single frame, what if we only moved according to what the human player was telling us to do with like the arrow keys? Um, or if you have an NPC, maybe they have a dedicated walking path. And so during the game loop here, they need to be like updating, I need to walk this way now, I need to walk this way now. Uh, those are all things that we're going to get into in the next few videos. Again, thanks so much for watching this video to the end. I hope you're enjoying the series. A uh, reminder to subscribe if you want to see the whole series and future videos that I make. And then also, if you're working on a game, you should join our Discord. Uh, we've got people in there making games. If you want to just tell people about your project or get feedback on it, or just you have questions about this project that we're working on here, Discord's a great place for that. The link is in the description below. Thanks again. See you in the next episode.